once again, my name is Nicole Jordan, and I'm a senior data analyst at CASAS. I'm joined by my co-host, Janice Farah. Um, Janice, what's your title? <laughs> I'm the National Technical Program Specialist, but I spend most of my time here in Northern California assisting agencies with all different kinds of things. Thank you for inviting me, Nicole. No problem. Yeah, Janice covers so many different um, you know, she she has so many skill sets, so that's why I asked her for her specific title, but um, she has a very in depth knowledge of TE she's worked in and when I say TE I mean tops for enterprise and she's also worked in an adult school too, so she has that experience working in an adult school. So now we'll start the presentation. Um, you are here for the California core performance and employment and earnings survey. So let's start off with why we um, why we need to do this. So the Office of Career Technical and Adult Education requires a, um, education programs to follow up with students twice after they've exit. So we say that's two quarters after they exit and then also four quarters after they exit. If you work better with months, they need to be followed up with six quarter or six months after they exit and then a full year after they exit. Now this information about jobs and wages will be going into NRS table five and NRS for those who are new that means national reporting system. So there's two ways to get your data into this um, NRS table five. The first way and probably the easiest way for everybody is to obtain a social security number from students. Now we know that this isn't always possible because maybe some don't want to give their social security number or for whatever reason. So that's why California has developed the second way, which is through this employment and earnings follow up survey. And through the survey, we'll be able to obtain information about jobs and wages. Now, when you give your social security number, there's a bigger data match that happens and to not go into too much detail, but they take the social security number and then they match it with the jobs and then wages. So this employment and earnings follow up survey is a quarterly process. And like I said earlier, you're required to follow up with students two quarters after they exit and then four quarters after they exit. So there's three main points that we should know. One is the quarter to take the survey. So are we in quarter one? Are we in quarter two? Then we have our exit quarters. So we need to identify which exit quarters these student, the student exited to know which quarter they need to take the survey. And then we have the last survey date and that's the last date that Tops Pro Enterprise or TE will send out a survey on your behalf, whether that's through email or phone. So on this next slide here, I've summarized this all for the entire year. We have our quarter to take survey. You'll see if it's quarter one, and let's focus on either quarter one or quarter two. So quarter one, that's from July 1st through September 30th. The two exit quarters that need to be followed up with are students who exited in program year 1920, quarter three, and program year 1920, quarter one. So those who exited in 1920, quarter one, they are being followed up four quarters after they exit. And the students who exited in 1920 quarter three, they're being followed up three quarters after exit. Okay, uh, so I see a question in the chat box. Did CASAS automatically send a survey to our school students if we forgot? No, so CASAS will not automatically send a survey to um, your students. So we'll go over a little bit about that later. Now, your last, uh, survey date is October 31st for quarter one. Now that means that Tops Pro Enterprise will send out a survey via the student portal. The last day is October 31st. If you forgot to send out surveys or you didn't complete it by then, all students will manually have to be surveyed. So that means calling them on the phone. So you'll actually have to get on the phone, get their answers, and then enter into TE. Now for second quarter, since we're in that in between area, because you could see that we're about to approach October 1st to December 31st. So for quarter two, 
students who exited in program year 1920 quarter four, as well as program year 1920 quarter two, they need to be followed up. And then the last day to send the surveys via TE is gonna be that January 31st. I definitely recommend referencing this table throughout the year. And that way you have a good understanding of which quarter is it, what exit quarters I need a survey, and then when's that last date that I can use TE to send out those surveys. So here's just a more visual example of the quarters. So for we have quarter to take survey is quarter one, and then the exit quarters are 1920Q3 and then 1920Q1. You'll see that the Q1, four quarters, so we'll count four quarters oh, um, from 1920 quarter one is this quarter, and then 1920Q3 is this quarter two. Okay, so let's see here. So we have another question. I get confused when I say the new exiting population. So that'll be our next slide right here. Oh, give me two slides. I word that. So Karen, give me two more slides and we'll, I'll show you the timeline. And then Erica, I will, um, I'll cover that at the very end, we might. And she's asking if you were just awarded WIOA funds, when do you start the survey? You may need to contact your CDE consultant about that um, since that's more of a policy question. Um, I, I can't give a for sure answer on when you need to start those. And then when are the exact due dates and deadlines and due dates for each quarter? We the due date, the tech, the due date is to act to send these surveys and start getting responses is going to be that data submission deadline. So this upcoming one for quarter one is going to be October 31st. Now, if you haven't completed um, sending the surveys by then, and we'll get into a little more details as we go through the presentation, then you'll, you'll be um, not in compliance with the requirement by October 31st. Okay, if we are new, previous grads, even though so again, Margaret, sorry if I said that wrong. Um, so if you're new to this program year, you might need to contact your CDE consultant because um, I do not, I definitely don't have a straight answer on those who are new to WIOA this program year. Okay, so we're talking about tasks to complete the requirement now. And these are the steps that you'll need to complete to be considered um, to complete your requirement, essentially, of course. So the first one is prepare your data. And that's, we always start with that, right? Um, and then the second one is you need to save your exit population using the NRS core performance wizard. Number three is to send required surveys. Number four is to view and manage qu current quarter invitations. And then five, personally contact students who don't respond. Now our goal is always to get 100% right, but we all know that it's very difficult to get that 100%. I will say that there are agencies who do contact every single one of the students who need to complete the survey. So it definitely is possible. You know, that may be a conversation that you want to have in your network meetings um, with your program specialists, maybe see where, what other agencies, what they're doing, like who is successful in your, in your area and what you can do to be, um, to increase your numbers of those who answered the survey. And I'll have, and I have a slide too for best practices as well. So let's start with task one, prepare the data. Now, this includes finish entering and cleaning all attendance hours, checking for students who are marked as retained in program, their record, you'll go under records, programs, and enrollment to view that. And then you'll also want to run the NRS core performance report as a pre-check. And you want to do this because you're only able to do, to run the NRS core performance wizard once each quarter. 
Now, since we're in quarter one, and if you are not new to WIOA, your, all your data for program year 1920 should be as complete as possible, but this is something that you should think of moving forward, right? Is every entering all the data, entering all your hours quarter by quarter to make sure that you don't have to go back and clean up. So let's dive deep more into the NRS core performance population. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, you're only allowed to run the NRS wizard one time. So this is why you want to check your NRS core performance population first. Now to do this, when you're in Tops for Enterprise, you go to reports, federal reports, and then NRS core performance population. You'll select which program year you're looking at, and then you'll want to keep a majority of the things the same. And then um, in this first screenshot, I've selected quarter three, because that's our exit population that we're looking at. And then I'll click generate and your NRS core performance population will generate. Now you can look at this list and see who should be there, who shouldn't be there. You can make any edits to the data. Um, maybe somebody should have exited and you've noticed them. So you'll go back and you'll enter in the necessary data for that student. So quarter one suggested timeline. And I know that this was a question that was happening, uh, that we had earlier. So for task two, for quarter one, the suggested date was July. And that was to save the exit population for program year 1920 quarter three using the NRS core performance wizard. Now task three, we generally say from July to August to send the survey invites to the two exited quarters. Now for that second one, the sending survey invites to those who exited in program year 1920 Q1. If you've done the survey wizard correctly, you shouldn't have to send the first set of surveys for those who exited four quarters ago. So um, if you're doing this correctly every program year, it'll ease up your, your workload um, every quarter. Now four is from August to September, and that's now. You'll want to follow up with students who haven't, uh, who haven't responded to the survey. And then also um, now in five from September to October is continue to contact those, again, who haven't responded. Now I get it. We are in, we are uh, September 29th, and we've already should have been in task four but we haven't done any of these other tasks, right? So we can, it's okay to go ahead and start. It's not gonna hurt you when we're marking you as completed for the deliverable requirement. These are just our suggested timelines to really spread out the, the to spread out your workload. Um, so you can go ahead and do tasks two through four today, and that's okay. Now, Let's talk about quarter two since we're right here on the border. Quarter two, um, if you're doing the quarter two requirement, today or maybe tomorrow is when you wanna start task two. Anywhere from October to November is when you wanna do task three. And then November to December is when you wanna do task four and then do any of that follow-up in task five in um, January. So let me go up because I see the chat going crazy here. So okay. I think there was a question about, yes, yeah, so individually contacting students who have not responded. Yes, their phone have been disconnected or refused to answer. Um, and I think Martha Perez, who's also our, our CASAS tech support is in here. And she said that you can add a note with an explanation about what happened to those students. So if they're disconnected, then you can write a note that they've been disconnected. There's not, we, you can only do so much, right? So definitely um, try, because we want to get that 100% um, responses. But because of these reasons, that's why it's not always possible. And once we go into TE, um, once we go into the Rolling Hills database, we can mark some of those, um, I can show you some of those places where you mark 
why, why you haven't been able to contact them. But we'll keep going since we have quite a few slides to go. Okay, now task two. So now we're, now we've prepared our data, we've ran that population report, and now we're ready to actually start the wizard. So task two, save the exit population for program year 1920 quarter three. Now to do that in top scroll, you'll go to tools and then NRS core performance wizard. Next, you'll, um, the following screen, you'll select the program year and you'll select the program year of your exit population. Since for quarter one, your, our exit population is um, from program year 1920, we'll select program year 1920. Next, we'll select the exit quarter. Now I have two screenshots of exit quarters here. I have one that should look, that looks correct right now. And then I have another one who looks like they haven't ran the NRS core performance wizard since quarter one. So it's that first one. So if I, if I go into our NRS core performance wizard and I get to the screen and I see that, and I've selected program year 1920 and I could still select quarter one and quarter two exit quarter, that means that the, that means that students who exited in, or that means that the NRS core performance wizard wasn't ran for students who exited in program year 1920 Q1 and Q2. I'll have to go back, run the wizard for those exit quarters until I get to this one that I've marked in green here. So if you want to know if you're up to date with running the NRS core performance wizard, it should look like that screenshot with the green check. Now, once uh, you click next, it'll take you to this NRS core performance population. It should look very similar to what we've ran as our pre-check. Definitely check this screen, make sure everything is correct because once you click next, then you'll click finish and then you won't be able to run the NRS core performance wizard again. So check that previous page, export if you need to, and then click finish. Now, once you click finish here, then you're done with task two. Before we go on to task three, and now we're talking about actually sending those required surveys and we'll um, cover a couple questions that have been coming up. Um, does anybody have any questions about task two, which is saving the exit population? I find that a lot of agencies are okay with task two. It's task three where they're becomes a lot of confusion. Why would you not be able to rerun the NRS core performance report? So once you run the um, NRS core performance report, it puts those students who exited into this next lister that we're seeing here on the screen. So if we keep running, it'll be, it'll keep creating multiple duplicates. It can't take back. Um, let's say if you're delete, let's say if somebody shouldn't have been on this report, it can't take back um, just the way the software is work, working. So every step affects the next step. Okay, Let's see if I have any questions that, okay, so we'll keep going here. So, oh, well, sorry, we haven't started task three. So task three, now we need to send our required surveys. Um, the first thing you'll do is you'll open up under TE records and then NRS core performance students. You'll see under NRS core performance students that we also have invitations and survey responses. But this NRS core performance students is the first lister we wanna look at. There's definitely a lot of listers to look at. So just keep going with me step by step and <laughs> things should be good for you. Now this lister will show students without a social security number that need to be sent a survey. On this lister, you'll see that there is a column labeled exit quarter. Now we've identified who our exit quarters have been in the previous slides. The default setting on the NRS core performance lister will be 
um, set for two quarters back. Now I was using my Rolling Hills database here. And so the screenshot above does not reflect the um, default setting. And you can see here, we have our name of the student, um, what their exit quarter was, what their native language was, um, their email, their cell phones. Now we wanna create, um, we wanna update as many emails as we can, update as many cell phones as we can because we want Tops Pro Enterprise to send those student surveys through the student portal. So next, you'll select any group of students to send their survey invitations to. There may be some planning that needs to go and some thinking ahead of um, before we send these surveys. Do we want to group by class? Do we want to group by native language? Um, email only, phone only, whatever works for you. Maybe there's a specific group of students that you had in mind for whatever reason. And the reason why you wanna start grouping here is because through the survey wizard, you'll be able to choose a specific native language. You'll be able to customize the survey. Um, does the survey need specific language? Um, that'll all happen later. So this is where we can start thinking about what groups of students that we wanna to survey together. Now, once you select those group of students, you'll click send survey invitations. Now my screen, now my computer screen isn't big enough, so that's why I had to click more and then go under um, send student, send survey invitations. So next you'll be prompted a screen, then you'll get to this next screen where it'll show you a list of students that you've selected. You can review this list, okay, Yesenia, oh, I meant to only click English as their native language. I can select her record and then I could select delete it and making sure I have the correct population here before we move forward into either customizing their survey and whatnot. Okay, so we have a question by Margaret. Does exiting students just mean the ones who completed the program or do we also follow up with students who dropped our program? It seems like both. I just wanted to check. Um, so the so the thing about Tops Pro Enterprise is it'll determine who those ex students are. So if they have, if they aren't retained in your program, um, if there's no additional records um, after those ninety days, and they are considered. Um, have exited your program. So it's based on that 90 days of absence. Uh, yeah, absence. And then they'll be considered as exiting your program. Maybe they'll come back, <laughs> um, but after those 90 days, they have con they'll be considered as exited. So they can still come back a year from now, but that you'll still be required by Tops Pro Enterprise to send those surveys. So I wouldn't, as long as you're entering, entering in all the program hours in on time, um, all your data, all the records, T, TE will do the work for you. So you won't have to guess who's exited, who hasn't. Um, and that's maybe why you wanna review who's retained in program because there's maybe a group that, um, that needs to have that designation but um, just keep entering your data in as up to date as possible and then let TE do the work on this one. Okay, so we've selected our group of students. We've deleted anybody from this um, sheet and we're moving on. So next we'll pick our delivery language and we'll pick our survey method. <clears throat> And this is why we want to group students beforehand. So if I wanted to pick only the Korean native uh, speak or Korean native speakers, then I can choose Korean here, and then I can choose if I want to contact them by email only. Now I know this select different delivery language. There's more languages, yes, that we want to add eventually. So I know that's in the process, but um, this is what we have so far. And then when we're selecting the delivery method, do you want to send a invitation to both email and text or just email or just text, you can select there. 
now we get to choosing the survey invitation delivery dates. And as I mentioned in previous slides, <clears throat> is if you do this correctly, then the wizard will already automatically send an invitation four quarters after exit. And this is where you get to choose which date it sends four quarters after exit. So um, here we have <clears throat> selecting the invitation date for second quarter after exit. And now I call that the first follow-up and that's this quarter follow-up. And then we have the fourth quarter after exit. And just to kind of summarize this, we're looking at students who exited in program year 1920 quarter three, their second quarter follow-up exit um, is going to be sent in this example, um, was sent on August 31st, and then their four quarters after exit will be sent on February 15th. We can click an expiration date. Um, maybe that's the end of the quarter. Um, maybe you'll only give them a certain amount of time, but I tend to leave the expiration date by default. Um, but if there's a specific date you want, then that's okay. Maybe you don't want to send it on a weekend. Maybe you don't want to send it on a Monday. Maybe you want to send it on a Tuesday because that works better for you. Um, so those are some things to think about. Okay, next is we'll get to the survey wizard. Now here we can choose to administer without customization or we can apply our own survey customization. The benefits of applying your own um, survey customization is that you can make it look like it's coming from your agency. You can upload your own logo. You can use a specific site name. You can use specific language. Um, you can really tailor it to what your age, how your agency, um, or what your agency looks like, right? Um, whether it's colors and that logo. But we also have that choice to administer without customization, since I know that maybe some people don't want to go in and spend some time um, editing every little thing. Okay, so I see a question. So why is the default send date always start on the 15th instead of the 1st? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I think we may have just um, chosen that. I, I, I honestly don't know um, what that good answer is, but if, if the February 1st works best, then that's why you can change it there. It's kind of up to the agency. And in this um, screenshot, you'll see that it says like hashtag agency name student survey. So hashtag agency name, it'll enter in whatever agency you put under agency name. So under alternative agency name, if I put John Doe site, then I'll say under the link for the English language, it'll say John Doe site student survey. But I can change the text to say John Doe site employment and earnings survey. You know, what, whatever I needed to say to make it more custom to your agency. And if you're really unsure about all your customizations, then you can click on this preview survey in the student portal and it'll bring you up to a screen or a link and then you can see what it looks like and review all the applied customizations that you did before you actually send it to the students. Okay, questions. Are these follow-ups required for CAPE non WIOA? At the moment, no. I guess that's all I'll say. <laughs> okay, so what does the survey look like? And this is what the survey looks like if you have zero customization. So it's very, you know, we have this background, it's probably Arial font. Um, it'll the survey will first welcome the student and this um, greeting can be changed. And then it'll ask if they have a job. If they click yes, then they'll have to enter out how much they've earned a month. If they click no, then they'll ask if it'll be, if they have been attending a school in a different area and then what school that they've attended. And then it'll give that ending greeting message. Okay, before we move on to task four, are there any questions about sending the surveys? I'm sure there was more 
that I maybe missed in. What exactly does that in a different area? So the reason why we added that is maybe your student is going to a different um, not in your, um, I guess not in your school district. Um, so if maybe they're going to a neighboring school district, you know, maybe they're going to the charter. Do you know some of those questions? Um, um, that's what it, that's what it means there. So I customize the survey content in English. Does the system automatically update the translation? I think if you're choosing Spanish, you're going to need to customize it in Spanish as well. Okay, so then we have a question about what if they come back. So if if they've come back within those 90 days, then the survey wizard won't mark them as having exited the program. If they come back those post 90 days, then that's okay. And then the next time they exit again, you're going to have to survey them again. So maybe you don't need to, maybe you can find them in class and find their responses. Um, but once the survey wizard is ran, they need to be followed up with as long as they're in that 90 day period. So I'll definitely, so yes, um, and I agree with you, Daniel. So if you have a question about the wording, I would definitely share that feedback with the CDE consultant, because yes, that was, um, the wording of these questions were definitely determined. Um, we were working with CDE on them. We were trying to make them as easy um, and understandable as possible, um, but maybe there's um, better wording that you have. I think we're asking, and then that question, we're asking if they're attend, if they've exited your program and now they're attending a different school in the area. Any questions before we get to task four? <laughs> okay, so task four. Now we are going to view and manage our invitations. The, we'll go under records and invitations into TE. And under this invitations lister, this is where we will look at the and manage all of our surveys that are currently being sent and will be sent in the future. A lot of, um, I'm not the biggest fan of reviewing this as your end all be all lister. I think it's really good to see if how you delivered it and whether it was successfully delivered. Um, if you're wanting to make sure that your four quarters after exit surveys have gone through, um, you, it's um, good to look at here. But something to note is that you only see the quarter to take survey column in this lister. You do not get to filter down by exit quarter. So for that reason, I really like to look at this, at the survey responses lister under records and survey responses. This is where you'll manage all your responses, right? So on my example, I have Claudia. The quarter for her to take a survey is um, program year 2021 quarter one, and that's this quarter. And I can see that she exited in 1920 of quarter one. Her delivery status is pending, she hasn't accessed it, she hasn't responded, and then it hasn't been filled in by staff. So from here is where I can see if I've actually fulfilled the requirement. And this is where we, CASAS, looks to see if you fulfilled the requirement, right? If I'm, the requirement states that you need to send surveys to students who exited in program year 1920, quarter one and 1920 quarter three. And if I'm looking to see if I've completed my requirement and I'm looking at the survey responses lister and I don't see that I've sent surveys to students who exited in 1920 quarter three, like in this, then I know that I have to go back to the NRS core performance lister and then send surveys to those students. Um, so this is definitely where you want to look at to make sure that you have those two populations and that those surveys were sent. And then you can also filter for 
if they've responded, and if it was filled in with staff, et cetera. So do I have any questions about managing the survey invitations? Okay, so we have a good question. So how many times do we need to send invitations? We suggest, I think your maximum amount of times you can send a text message is three times. Um, and Martha, you might want to correct me if I'm wrong there. And I think it's just for text messages is three times. Um, and we say do it three times. And then after the third time, I think it's about time that you need to maybe physically um, pick up the phone and give them a call to get those responses. Okay, question. We don't need to send the survey invitation to those who exited four quarters back, correct? So it is automatically done if you've done your two quarters after exit. It is automatically done, but you may need to start following up with them. So were they properly, you know, if a student um, maybe has changed their email or the phone number, you'll be able to see under their delivery status, oh, it was undelivered. They still need to be managed, but your first round of survey invitations will have been done. And Martha said, yes, yeah, so emails can be, de can be done unlimited. It's just those three text messages. Um, and we want to get as many responses as possible. But again, we know that that's not always um, possible. So our task five here is personally contact students who don't respond. So again, we've talked about that. And when we double click on a student from the survey responses lister, this is the screen we get we can see their contact status. Okay, we haven't contacted them yet. Um, okay, maybe we'll call them later. We'll call them tomorrow. Uh, contacted, but number is no longer in service. Here is where we can note those notes. And then we also have a, a box where you can enter in a personalized note. And that way you can manage who, what, maybe, you know, um, who you've contacted and what you need to do to follow up with them. So question, are we sending two separate groups quarters at once? Yes, yes. So you are sending two separate groups and that's why there's always two exit populations every quarter. There is a group that has exited two quarters ago and then there's an egg, a group that has exited four quarters ago. Now your four quarters after exit, if you've done your two right, should automatically get done. So hopefully you can kind of cross that one off and then um, you'll need to manually go in and do this whole process for those who exited um, two quarters ago. Nicole, this is Janice. There was a question earlier, I think it might be um, helpful to share again. The question was, if you try to contact the student via phone, but you don't actually get them on the phone, does that count as contacted or not? I would say yes, maybe <laughs> that does count as contacted. You've attempted to contact them, but is there, can you contact them by email? You know, maybe they came back to your school to contact them that way. Um, so yes, I would say yes. So contacted implies attempted to contact in terms of sending out a repeat email or a phone call. That's an interesting one. Right off the top of my head, don't know the exact answer to that. Yeah, I was, and I, yeah, I would definitely wouldn't know the exact answer to that um, either. I think it's maybe it's your interpretation of what um, that field contacted is, and these are definitely your notes to keep under contact status. And I don't, um, but we are looking for that goal, right? Is to get re survey responses from as many students as possible. So whether you want, how you want to try to contact them again will be up to you. And maybe that is a special contact note to clarify what you mean by contacted. 
whether you only contact them by email or contacted them by phone. Okay, so are we looking for 100% contacted responses? It is very difficult. I'm going to say no. I think we all are looking for 100% contacted, but we know it's not possible. So I think we're looking for you to get as many contacts as possible. Um, but that's, I mean, that's how I like to say it. <laughs> so hopefully that clarifies things. Um, we can only do so much, right? We can only try to contact, we can only do as much contacting as we're given, um, but you're not going to be, um, I don't know, I want to say you're not going to get a little slap on the wrist or anything for not getting 100% contact, 100% uh, responses. Um, but I would say, yeah, I, you want to get as many as possible. Okay, I'm just reading through the, con um, the chat just to see. Yeah, so, um, and then someone you made a great point. You can contact 100% of the students, but that doesn't mean you'll get a 100% response. So that's where the effort is. And Gilbert, can you define your question? So it says, when is someone, oh, never mind. So, so when is someone non-contacted? Um, I would say maybe that's when they, you were unable to deliver their survey via text or email and you haven't followed up and contacted them um, physically by picking up the phone, um, that's when I would consider somebody not contacted. Where does the information of students with social security number? Um, so that the information goes up, um, definitely goes up and gets matched with EDD and that's how we get their job wages information post-secondary information so um, that's a higher up um, data match that happens there is an in uh, marina so hopefully i said that i uh, said your name correctly but there isn't a required number yes there isn't a required number of responses um, to get back Is the task five listserie located in the record student responses? Yes. So this is located in, you'll go to records, student responses, you'll double click on the student and then you'll get to this. Put a note in line. Okay. Okay, so I think now it's time we actually go into Rolling Hills database and Janice posted earlier about the Rolling Hills database. Now for those who are new, Rolling Hills database is a database that you can go and essentially practice in. You can practice uh, sending, or I wouldn't say sending the surveys, but um, you know, going through the steps of the surveys. You can even practice uh, running a uh, data integrity report. Um, and it's for staff to use to get used to TE and maybe feel free to try some things out that you don't really want to try on your data, but you want to try, um, it's kind of like a play situation. So let me share my new screen. So here, we're in the Rolling Hills simulation and I've decided to pick administrator whoever and then enter the password, which is admin, because I'm going to come in as a administrator. Now I have a question. Is there a way to enter the survey items directly on the screen rather than going into the student portal? It takes a lot of time. Yes. Are Care, um, Martha or Janice, can you confirm with Karen? I think you still might have to go through the student portal. So now we're here, we're on the start page. I'm gonna just take that away. So we'll start with task two, which is running our NRS core performance wizard. Click that, select program year. We are selecting the program year for students who have exited um, for our exit population. And right now that's 1920. 
and then I'll click next. Oh, so it's a, it says here that it looks like all the surveys have been generated for this quarter and a lot of people have access to the Rolling Hills database. So what this tells me is maybe somebody already came in here and did this. So let's try again. Let's give you a, a different example. Let's try this program here. But here we'll see, we'll get to select our exit quarter. And it's too early to um, send out surveys to students who exited in 2020, 21. So this was kind of a dud. So sorry about that. But let's go into the listers here. So now we're going to listers. Let's obviously the NRS core performance wizard was ran for our required surveys. So we'll go into NRS core performance students. Okay, so we have our one person who exited in 1920 Q3. Now to send them a survey, I will go into more, send survey invite. Am I sure that I want to administer a survey to this one student? Yes. Okay, I'll click next through this. I have this one student, but I can always, if I had a group of students, I can always delete a select, um, select records, but in this case, I don't. Now select my delivery language. That'll be Spanish. My delivery method, I'm gonna do both email and text. Uh, why not kill two birds with one stone? <laughs> so today, um, so now I'll need to select the invitation delivery date that the earliest I can send it is today, sure. And then it'll send on that, um, on that February 15th, but maybe I want to send them on February 1st. That's fine. I can, now I can do apply without customization, but let's do apply customization just for the fun of it. So now I have this, I can enter Jane Doe site. That's what I want my um, agency alternative name to be. Okay, and then here I can scroll down. Okay, so this is the English one. Okay, maybe please, do I want to edit here? I can do whatever edits I want. Keep scrolling down. This is what it'll look like through text. Thank you for attending, whatever your agency name. So like we said here, the hashtag student first name, that's where It'll take whatever the student's name is that we have in TE and it'll automatically put it in there. So we don't want to mess with anything that has that. And I keep saying hashtags, so that maybe hopefully doesn't show my age too much, but, um, or the pound sign. So I can edit maybe that thank you for attending or the um, please use whatever, but, um, but I don't want to mess with anything near that sign. Here are the layouts. And then I can reset here, or I can preview um, the survey in the student portal. So I'll go back. Um, so we'll just cancel out of this. Let's say we kept going forward. Um, once you go through the survey customization, um, you can go ahead and play around with it. So I'll exit the wizard. So now I've sent, let's say I've sent my survey. So now I'm gonna go to survey invitations. Now here is a list of all the survey invites that have been sent. Um, you can see that some people are gonna get, have been set, sent um, three invitations in, on June 30th. And yeah, they needed to be ex, um, surveyed this quarter. They were surveyed using both email and, S, uh, and text. Um, so, but I can also, okay, maybe I wanna look not the current quarter, maybe I wanna see what, who's gonna be sent an email in 20, let's say 2021 20, Q2. Okay, so this is my list of students who are gonna be sent surveys November 6th. Now, if you edit one, will it edit all? And are you, yes, Anna, can you please clarify your question? 
and yeah, for example, the uh, when you edit um, attending, will it uh, uh, change attending to all the languages? <laughs> I believe not. So I think you know, if you change the word attending in English, it'll only change attending for that. I, oh. If I'm not mistaken, and Martha, I may need to. You know what? I'm going to take this all back because I'm going to say, let me get, let me clarify that answer for you. Um, so let me get back to you on that. But I'm not sure if Martha has any. Um, yeah. Okay. So Jan is, back, is backing me up a little bit on that is the translation function is probably not that robust. So you may need to edit the word attending or um, words in whatever different um, languages. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've now I've managed everybody's survey invitations. Now I'm going to look at their responses. So here I can see all those who needed to take a survey this quarter. Now I've only seen students who've exited in 1920Q1. I've not seen any students who exited in 1920Q3, but let me filter. For 1920Q3. And my filter is showing up as I haven't sent any surveys to any students who exited in 1920Q3. I have not completed the requirement. I will need to go back to NRS Core Performance Students and then send YESI a, a survey so that I can now complete the requirement, the CD requirement. Can the lister do a count of how many times a student has received the survey instead of so that's so the end of the invitations lister Gilbert has how many times a student has been sent a survey, which is also why okay, maybe that's why it can get a little confusing. And that's why I like to look at the surveys uh, survey responses lister um, and then we could see what the latest response is so there's, the survey still hasn't been accessed even after we've sent it three times. We need to personally contact those. And then here is something that I'll get back into because it looks like we're running out of time now. Um, but I can export here and then export student survey items. So I had a question and this is something I didn't cover in my August presentation, but you can export this whole lister and it'll summarize all these columns and then it'll also add in what everybody's responses is for if they had a job um, or what their wage was what school they're attending so you'll get an excel spreadsheet and you can do whatever analysis you want um, internally with that data okay so i'm going to go back to my presentation because i want to share some important stuff from the powerpoint So these are the available reports that we've talked about and we're talking about exporting the student survey items if we want to see what everybody's responses is for whatever quarter of all time, um, whatever we want. Now, best practices from the field. This is something that we got recently. So thank you, Janice, for grabbing these. If you have a best practice, please send me an email so that I can now include it in on this presentation for everybody to see, but e, &E survey 20 to 30% more successful if sent around 7 p.m. instead of during the day. I think that's a great best practice. More, maybe people are busy from nine to five, right? Um, if we get a text, like for us ourselves, if we get a text message now, okay, I'll handle it later, especially if I have to answer a survey. So maybe 7 p.m. is a better time to actually sit on your phone and answer some survey questions. And if contacting them by phone, there are students who are very hesitant on giving you their exact income. So maybe a range is better um, to lessen that discomfort. Cause that, I mean, that is a concern, right? Have speakers of other languages making phone calls. So if someone speaks fluent Mandarin and you have a group of Mandarin st um, students who speak whatever language, then you can give them a phone call, have them, um, send those phone calls and then aggressively keep student records up to date. I agree with that. 
And I've added this last bullet is inform your students at orientation or upon exit that they'll receive this survey. So giving, letting them know that they're going to get it in six months and then again in a year, at least they won't look at the text message and think it's spam, right? Or won't look at the email and think it's spam. They'll know what to expect. And then I, in addition to customizing it, putting your logo on it, maybe putting your site name instead of the big agency name, those are more details that we can add. So document links, so every quarter. Now, if you've come to this presentation and every quarter um, you just wanna, there's a lot of steps, right? We have those task schedule and guidelines for you. It'll go step by step, button by button every quarter. Um, we'll, we're gonna get that quarter two one out shortly, so keep looking back on the website. And then we have our All Things Employment and Earnings Survey link um, where this presentation is held, previous quarters, what the survey questions are, um, some letters that we originally sent. Keep looking. Oh, and Tanya gave a really great um, best practice here is she says, if you don't mind me asking, how much do you usually make a month? Just an estimate is fine. She gets a better response that way. So that's, we will receive the recording, right? I'm hoping to post the recording. <laughs> so um, hopefully on either CASA's YouTube or on that All Things Employment and Earnings Survey link, um, you keep looking back there. Let me look through here. Araceli, to answer your question, I just actually um, private messaged Nicole, are you going to tell them about entering one is good enough? And then Araceli said, yes, Jay said we can put a one in the income category if the students don't want to say how much they earn. And that is correct. Yes. And if they, yes, thank you for adding that too. I forgot to cover that. Is, Janice is very correct. So if they have a job and they don't want to say, go ahead and enter that one. So Jackie has something great to add to, is they make sure they go over the SS uh, Social Security form, the volunteer, voluntary authorization of Social Security when they enroll. Virtually every student will apply. So making, that's also why maybe you want to tell your students what the importance of this is. And yes, the more Social Security numbers you get, the less surveys you have to send out. So that's great. So here's our resources, um, Cap M. If you have questions about your deliverables, about data at costs.org, if you have questions about the status of your submissions, if you have questions about co-ops, go ahead and contact EL Civics sit us, or, or sit at costs.org. But we, I can, I have some time so I can sit here <laughs> and answer all the questions. And if you have no questions, then thank you for attending. Um, I will work on getting this presentation. So the presentation is already posted, but once this recording goes through, I'm hoping to get it posted on either the CASAS website or the um, our CASAS YouTube. So follow us. I will, I can follow up with an email of the PowerPoint. So, okay, so Tanya, I have a question about our district has a language line. Can we use it now? Are we able to use it for these surveys? I'm not sure I'm aware of what a uh, language line is. Uh, Janice, do you have experience using that? I was just gonna ask if she could unmute herself and describe that because it sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. Yes, um, so we have it where we can call the student and if they have like a language barrier, they can't understand this, then we can put them on hold and then connect to the call and then um, talk to, basically we say to the translator what we want them to translate and then they repeat exactly what we, what we say to them. Wow, it's awesome that you have that resource. Yeah. Just sitting yeah. there with the phone and translate into, that's, I have absolutely no problem with that. It's Nicole. been really helpful. But definitely. I mean, it's, it's an authorized person from the agency repeating the questions in the native language to get the information from a student. That's, that's exactly what the survey is meant to do. 
Okay. Are you yeah, working on that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. I just want to make sure Nicola's going to give me a thumbs up on that. I mean, I think we're looking for responses. So, yes, Janice said everything perfectly. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? And so, yeah, I'll, I'll stay on for a couple more minutes. And if not, then thank you. Thank you, Chow. So I think some people do it on the system. I'm going to leave you with something here. So like I said, if you're still on is if um, we're hoping to get that quarter two going soon. If you haven't completed your quarter one requirement, then it's okay to go through all these tasks um, now. That's fine. Um, the guideline I gave previously is a suggested timeline, and maybe starting that suggested timeline for quarter two is best, but we have a suggested timeline for quarter two coming up too. But I'm going to leave you with and sorry for clicking through all these. I realize I should have done this differently already. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to leave you guys with this because it's definitely confusing to know what quarter it is, what quarter we're taking the survey, what the exit quarters are that are required to be surveyed that quarter, and then when's that last date to send. Thank you, Tanya. I, I like, yeah, definitely keep this. <laughs> I like this table. It just summarizes the whole year. And no, uh, no roll call. Oh, and I already lost the screen. And if anybody has any other questions that they want to email me. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally okay with answering um, any specific questions, but there's still 20 of us on here. So if anybody hasn't, keep those questions coming. And I see that some program specialists are on here. <laughs> hate to call you out. Okay, so going once for any questions and feel free to unmute yourself and just ask. And if not, I'm going to assume that a lot of you are just waiting for anybody else to ask any questions, but. Hey, Nicole, it's Janice. Do you still have Tops Pro Enterprise open? I do have Tops Pro Enterprise open. Would you like me to share that screen? No, I was just, I don't, I was in it myself and trying to figure out if, if I was going to go through and make any edits to the responses. I, showed, I see you shared how to do export student survey items, and that's in there. Is there a way that you can bring up an additional column or two or three or four that shows how they responded, or is that not saved in Tops Pro Enterprise that way? I think the answer is you have age, address. Yeah, so there's no, yeah, there's no columns to automatically show that. Got it. That's what I thought. Like if yeah. someone was going to do an, an answer and go through and clean up some of the surveys and put ones in, let's say, for the ones that were missing the ones. Oh, yeah. Do you have any, any hints on how to do that? I'm putting you on the spot because I don't know the answer to this. I thought maybe you do. Well, I think what you want to do is you want to, and this is not uh, by any means maybe the most efficient way that I know, but exit and then you'll export those student survey items and just filter for those who had a job but didn't have a response for the amount. Okay. And, then and then we'll go back in here, we'll double click. The part I want to see, yeah. And then we can edit here. Okay, we'll call them tomorrow. They're only call by email or only call or email not working. I don't know. 
Oh, and then just below where you're typing, it says survey items under number two, monthly income. You can change that answer if you want. Is that how that works? Yeah, you have to answer survey with the student portal. Mm, got it. What does get item responses do? <laughs> totally put you on the spot, but I'm dying to know how this works. Uh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I would click answer student survey. <laughs> oh, it generates the answers after. So once you, thank you, Tanya. So once you've answered the survey, then um, getting that item response so that it regenerates. There you go. Learn something new every day about this wizard, right? <laughs> and this is the same student portal that we're starting to develop more hooks into, like, um, the reading level indicator when you send the invitation out to the student to let them take the RLI that is going through the same hunk of code within Top Sport Enterprise that's managing communications between the database and the student based on how the data manager sets it up. Got it. Okay. I have a question uh, whether or not uh, that if there's a third party import for this particular page. I don't believe there is. Okay. I'm just curious to, because I noticed that the, you have all these four questions and they can be answered. And especially when you're contacting people and, and just going in, to, instead of going individually into the portal to make those changes, you, I was just wondering if it'd be possible to do it through an Excel uh, spreadsheet and then just upload it. I'm looking at the import types right now. There's 10 of them and none of them include the data that you're describing. But that's a great question. I will pass that along to the developers. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. For thank your you. Mm -hmm. Gilbert, what um, agency are you from? I'm from Pasadena City College. Okay. Is this your first year? Sorry if it's not. <laughs> uh, well, I've been working, uh, this would be my, going my second or third year, working with Pasadena City College in this capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually working mostly with the L civics, uh, but mm -hmm. I am becoming familiar with TOPS. So I'm working with the uh, coordinator for CASAS or mm -hmm. in our agency. So. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to become much more familiar not only with uh, TOPS Pro, but ETS and importing and exporting of data. Okay. Great. Yeah, it was great to e meet you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're 10 minutes out and definitely the questions have stopped coming in. Um, going, I will stop my share. Hang on, let me, um, let me grab the chat. <laughs> we are going to, Got it. me too. So I've saved the chat and thank you all for attending. If you have any other questions, you can email me and Jordan at casas.org and Thank you. Have a great day.